It is a spectacular victory for BJP. This is a historic victory for the BJP and for AAP for very different reasons. It's uh, humiliating, disappointing, disillusioning, uh, demoralizing defeat for the Indian National Congress. What does the victory mean for Prime Minister Narendra Modi? Can Modi overcome the economic and social challenges, unite a polarized country, and take the nation forward before the next election? Seemingly invincible Narendra Modi has done it again. The Indian Prime Minister led his right-wing BJP party to another historic victory in the recent elections in India's most populous state of Uttar Pradesh. In four other states, the BJP was returned to power in three, namely Uttarakhand, Goa and Manipur, while another party, AAP, swept Punjab. A spectacular and outstanding victory for the Bharatiya Janata Party and for a regional party uh, like the Aam Aadmi Party to make inroads into uh, the state of Punjab. In fact, a historic movement uh, for uh, politics of India because Aam Aadmi Party is in fact one of the first regional parties uh, to have two governments in a state. So uh, it adds weight to the regionalization of politics in India. It is a spectacular victory for BJP for two reasons. First, in a big state like UP, where chief ministers have never been managed to return back to power. In such a situation, Yogi Adityanath has not only won elections for, you, uh, for the party, uh, but a convincing victory, a very large victory. Uh, look at the state of Uttarakhand. That is the state where parties have changed in every election from between Congress and BJP. And in that state also, BJP has made a record. BJP has retained power in Uttarakhand. The numero uno is, of course, Uttar Pradesh, a state with 230 million people that determines the cross-currents and contours of Indian politics. If it were a country, Uttar Pradesh would have been the fifth populous nation, bigger than even Pakistan, and equivalent to Germany, the United Kingdom and France combined. The state has given India nine prime ministers, including Narendra Modi. No political party can rule India without securing substantial support in Uttar Pradesh. Some observers believe these were bellwether state elections that show which party is in a poll position to capture power in the general elections two years later. This election is Uttar Pradesh ka semi final because it is a 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 semi final because it is उस माहौल को बनने में मदद मिलती है तो बहुत सारे लोग कहते हैं कि इस चुनाव में भले ही हमने बीजेपी को वोट भले ही हमने बीजेपी को वोट दिया या नहीं दिया लेकिन जो केंद्र का चुनाव है उसमें हम बीजेपी को वोट देंगे The BJP's landslide victory is even more surprising since it happened despite the challenges faced by the pandemic hit country the death and destruction caused during the second wave are etched on people's minds. There are also issues of widespread unemployment and acute housing shortages. To add to people's woes, many small businesses have gone bankrupt and shut down. The COVID-19 has been affected by the COVID-19 and the business sector has been affected रेयरी पट्टी का बिजनेस जो ऑर्गेनाइज अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर्स जिसमें लेबरर्स बहुत ज्यादा काम करते हैं उत्तर प्रदेश जैसे बिहार जैसे राज्यों के वो प्रभावित हुआ है हुआ था कोविड के कंडीशन के कारण The frustration and desperation spilt onto the streets of Lucknow when young job seekers held a rally that was met with a brutal police crackdown The job seekers have been appearing in exam after exam for years to get government jobs. One job seeker was 34-year-old Rajiv Chaudhry, who aspired for decent government employment. 
Rajiv was a science graduate from a poor village called Shiloh, about 120 kilometers from the state capital Lucknow. About 10 years ago, Rajiv began preparing for exams, says his brother Manoj. The Chowdhury's live in a poverty-stricken village where back-breaking work is needed just to survive. The family makes ends meet since they have a small plot of land and a provision store. Manoj says his brother had dreams, believing he could qualify for a civil services job if he tried harder. Though Shiloh is a poor village, the young men in the hamlet represent the new aspirational India. They study hard and attend coaching classes to pass government exams, but only very few succeed. लेकिन कुछ लोगों को जॉब मिली है ना के बराबर है यहां की जो जॉब पाने वालों की संख्या और कुछ लोग हैं ऐसे कि पढ़ के कोई टेंपो चला रहा है तो कोई पान की दुकान खोल रखा है उसके बाद कोई किराना स्टोर चला रहा है लाइफ वाज हार्ड बट द चौधरी ब्रदर्स बिलीव्ड दे कुड पुल थ्रू इवन इन द पेंडेमिक ईयर ऑन द 12th ऑफ सितंबर 2020 Manoj received a call from Allahabad, where his brother was staying. The caller told Manoj that his brother had met with an accident. While on his way, Manoj received several calls on his phone and realized that his brother had given up the struggle and killed himself. My brother had a note in his writing. तो उसमें ये लिखा था कि मैं बेरोजगारी से हार के सुसाइड कर रहा हूँ कि मेरे मित्र जो भी हैं वो अगर मेरे छोटे भाइयों पे कोई दिक्कत आती है चाहे वो आर्थिक प्रॉब्लम रही हो या कुछ भी आता है तो वो उनको उनकी देख रेख करें Not far from where Rajiv took the extreme step Indrajit Chauhan still harbors dreams of a decent job. Indrajit is an electronics and communications engineer, but his technical education did not help him in the job market. It's not easy to get a job in a country that had 53 million unemployed people in December last year, according to the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Last month, the unemployment rate was 7.3%. Indrajit is now looking for a non-technical government job, but even that hasn't materialized. He took part in the job seekers' protest, witnessing firsthand the police response to their demands. वहाँ पे जाने के बाद पता चला कि वो लोग लाठियाँ और डंडे उन्हें मारना शुरू कर दिए। तो कुछ लड़के भाग गए, मैं भी उनमें से था। मैं रात के समय बहुत सारे पुलिसकर्मी जो है कई सारे लॉज में जा जा के दरवाजा तोड़ के या फिर कैसे भी करके बच्चों को डरा धमका के बाहर निकाला और उनको लाठियों से मारते हुए किसी का हाथ फटा था किसी के पीठ फटी थी ऐसे करके बहुत ज्यादा स्थिति खराब कर दी गई थी कि हां कि दोबारा ये लोग आवाज न उठाएं Surprisingly the BJP still won in Uttar Pradesh and convincingly so How could Modi and the state chief minister a hardline Hindu monk Yogi Adityanath script this fairy tale victory why did the voters ignore the COVID devastation, joblessness, and economic crisis to return the BJP to power? There are two things. People are concerned about economic crisis. They are worried. They are thinking about their future. But that has not been the consideration of their voting. 
when they decided which party to vote for, there were other considerations. And one big consideration is likeness for the party, attachment to the party, the party you like. And large number of people in India at this moment are strong supporters of BJP. So for them, it doesn't matter which candidate BJP has put up. It doesn't matter whether it is because of the BJP government that economic crisis is deepened. Uh, people have voted for the party. They, they have voted for Prime Minister as such. Prime Minister Modi remains very popular and people still have a lot of faith in Prime Minister Modi. The situation is more worrisome that despite the COVID mismanagement, the fuel prices and the cylinder prices uh, hurting the pocket of the common middle class and the lower middle class, the rising uh, unemployment which is spreading like a wildfire in a jungle. Despite that, Congress is not able to convince the voter uh, that calls for a, a very big alarming wake-up call and that also shows the Indian National Congress, that means us, the lot, need to realize that the trust deficit between the voter and the Indian National Congress has grown so much that despite all the perils of the Bharatiya Janata Party, all the issues plaguing the country, the voter is not ready to trust in Uttar Pradesh, uh, the Indian National Congress. It has often been said that India has such a challenge that we need a minimum of one million jobs every month and we are far behind that. Look at recent statistics. Recently, for several months, we have been creating more than a million jobs every month. Of course, we need to sustain that, but people understand the reality uh, and they don't get taken in by some uh, motivated narratives. Whatever the narratives, an emphatic victory in Uttar Pradesh strengthens Modi's hands in the run-up to the general elections in two years. But the parliamentary elections are still some way off, and the economic crisis is immediate and widespread. In the Uttar Pradesh capital of Lucknow, small businesses are struggling to shrug off the negative impact of the pandemic. How long will the slowdown continue before the winds of revival blow in the sectors where people struggle to make a living. The second COVID wave hit India from March to May 2021. It hit Uttar Pradesh a little later than in Delhi and Maharashtra. But when it did, the virus ripped apart the health infrastructure in the poverty-stricken populous state. The BJP state government was caught napping, bodies piled up and hospitals ran out of oxygen supply. <laughs> Slowly, the state government got its act together. It now has given 297 million vaccine doses. And today, the infection rates have also fallen dramatically. India did a phenomenal job of uh, countering this crisis. Uh, from uh, not having first world infrastructure and medical facilities, very rapidly we scaled up. Look at the massive 1.8 billion people who have been vaccinated, never in the history of humankind. But the pandemic has dealt a severe blow to many sectors that are very hard to revive. Lucknow, the ancient city of classical music and art that has spawned some of the finest craftsmen, artists and musicians through centuries. It's also the nerve centre of India's politics, being the capital of the country's largest state. One art form synonymous with Lucknow is chikorn, or traditional embroidery, that was first introduced by Mughal rulers in the 16th century. The technique of creating such work is known as chikonkari, exquisite, beautifully done hand embroidery on a variety of fabrics. But the centuries-old craft is now under threat. Many chikon businesses shut down during the pandemic and skilled artisans are surviving on low wages.
55-year-old Rajiv Sharma set up his small chikorn factory a quarter of a century ago. He realized there was a growing demand for the traditional craft and wanted to market his products overseas. Though it's a very famous art, but it was not globally accepted art. So I thought to promote this internationally. I tried to uh, survey many places, visited many countries, and see how our product can be made according to their needs. And finally, I came out with the ideas that I should make something which is uh, required a boost to chicken curry craft. So earlier it was mainly sold in domestic market and after we started for global market, we saw a difference in the image in the international buyers. They accepted and we, we made accordingly a different kind of product. Sharma's company grew quickly and he began exporting to Europe, Japan and Mauritius. But it didn't last. The pandemic affected the chikorn curry sector in a way he could never have imagined. In 2020, many units could not cope with increasing debts and downed their shutters. It's very unfortunate that some of business houses, they couldn't survive during the pandemic crisis. There were many, many challenges people couldn't face and they, they couldn't uh, survive. They have to shut down. And I have seen people who are working in cities, they have gone back to villages because there was no opportunities at that time. The medium and small business enterprises is a difficult time for और उस समय ये उसके उसकी जो कोरोना का मार सबसे ज्यादा इन व्यापारों को मिला है को हुआ है और उसके लिए जो अभी बजट आपने देखा होगा बजट में भी इस तरह के प्रावधान किए गए हैं ताकि इस तरह के मीडियम एंड स्मॉल एंटरप्राइजेस को एक खास तरह का सपोर्ट मिले और ये एक चुनौती है क्योंकि भारत का ज्यादातर जो जो श्रमिक है लेबरर्स हैं वो मीडियम एंड स्मॉल एंटरप्राइजेस में ही काम करते हैं और उनको स्ट्रेंथन होना बहुत जरूरी है लेकिन क्राइसिस है क्राइसिस है 40 year old Rizwana is a skilled chikorn worker who has been creating intricate designs on fabrics for over 2 decades she now mentors and teaches a group of women in the intricacies of the craft on the terrace of her house in the congested Doliganj locality of Old Lucknow Rizwana managed to eke out a living even during the dark days of the pandemic since she works mainly from home. But the lockdown created havoc in the sector that employs thousands of women on daily wages. Business was low and the women were paid negligible wages. तो हम लोगों के लिए बहुत बड़ी समस्या थी क्योंकि हम लोगों के जब कोरोना आया तो ये समझिए हमारे यहां गलियों में भी पाबंदी लगी थी हम लोग नहीं निकल सकते थे जो महिलाएं दूर की थी बाहर की थी यहां पर आकर किराए पे रह रही थी वो महिलाएं अपने घर वापस चली गई हैं क्योंकि उनका उतना काम नहीं है किराया देना फिर घर का खर्चा चलाना तो इसलिए वो वापस चली गई हैं आधे दाम देकर बनवाई है क्योंकि उन्हें जरूरत है महिलाओं को लेकिन जिनका हम काम करते हैं भैया ने ऐसा उतना नहीं किया कोरोना के टाइम पे उन्होंने कम तो किया लेकिन उन्होंने के हां थोड़ा सा नहीं के बराबर कम किया था लेकिन अब जरूरत में महिलाएं थी परेशान थी तो इस वजह से उन लोगों ने उस पे भी वो राजी हो गईं करने के लिए वो करती रहीं As the pandemic swept through the country last year the BJP government launched a series of schemes to help the poor Unfortunately not much help reached Rizwana and her family. She doesn't know who benefited from those schemes. Modi ji ne jo bhi niyam nikal jo bhi unhone scheme banayi ho ya jo bhi unhone lab diya ho hum logon tak nahi pahunchi hain. Hamare yahan hamari mahilaon ke jo card bane hain Modi ji ne ki taraf se bane hain labor card bane hain aur yesham card bane hain to lekin hum logon tak ye nahi pahuncha kyunki hum log to gharon mein rehte hain apna kaam ko mazdoori karte hain. ये बड़े-बड़े लोग इसका फायदा उठाते हो तो इसके बारे में हम लोगों को बिल्कुल भी खबर नहीं है और हम लोग तो बिल्कुल नहीं चाहेंगे कि मोदी जी दोबारा आए क्योंकि इतना ज्यादा परेशान हम लोग हो चुके हैं कि पढ़ाई से भी लेकर बेरोजगारी से लेकर 
सब कुछ राशन ज़रूर मिल रहा है लेकिन राशन से ही क्या होता है सिर्फ खाना ही तो नहीं है और खाने में भी दाल सब्जी भी है और भी तमाम खर्चे हैं The reality is, the Indian economy is already on a downward spiral since the pandemic began. More than two years have passed since the coronavirus swept through the country. The Indian government is still battling widespread unemployment, soaring inflation and rising income inequality. The health crisis has also severely disrupted its growth momentum, and the rising crude oil prices following Russia's invasion of Ukraine could sap its economy and threaten its growth prospects even further. Ratings agency Moody's has recently slashed India's growth forecast for the year to 9.1% from 9.5% previously. The pandemic has affected everybody in the world, including India. The $5 trillion economy is a milestone which has got a little delayed because of the pandemic. But otherwise, yes, we are on course because for five years in a row and now the sixth year in a row, India is the fastest growing large economy in the world. So in, in many parameters, now we have started overtaking uh, other top 10 economies like uh, France, which is at number six. Uh, then there's UK and Germany. There is no doubt that India is well on its way, not just to five trillion, but eventually to 10 trillion and more. However, not much improvement is visible in the centuries-old Chikon craft sector that's struggling to rebuild after the devastation caused by the pandemic. But Rizwana wants the art not just to survive, but even thrive when she leaves this world. जबरदस्ती सिखाते हैं जो महिलाएं की उम्र निकल चुकी वो कहती हैं अब सीख के क्या लेकिन तब भी हम उनसे ये कहते हैं कि ये सीख लें जो भी ये टाका है कल यही काम आएगा तो उनको हम सिखाते हैं मेरे साथ वो काम करें या ना करें लेकिन मेरा मकसद ये है कि अगर हम जाएं तो मेरे साथ काम ना जाए Despite the severe hardships and covid led devastation the Modi magic reigns supreme in most parts of northern India Modi is trusted as he stands above his party and the government. The only state where the BJP did not make any mark is Punjab, where it was never a major political force. Throughout history, the state was always governed by the Congress and a regional party called the Akalis. But this time around, AAP, or the Common People's Party, which rules in Delhi, swept the state. Does this mean a death knell for the country's oldest political party, Congress? Punjab, once known as the country's breadbasket, has been in turmoil in recent months. First, tens of thousands of farmers protested for a year against three farm laws introduced by the Modi government. The government backed down finally, withdrawing the laws. But the deep agrarian crisis ravaging the countryside has shown no signs of easing. Thousands of farmers have killed themselves over the years driven to desperation by falling incomes and rising debts. Then the elections came. Though they were keenly fought, the ruling Congress failed to reach out to the farmers and conducted a confused and incoherent campaign, hobbled by infighting and a poor governance record. Now, a 10-year-old regional party, AAP, or Common People's Party, has created history, wresting the state from the Congress. 32-year-old Amandeep Kaur is an assistant professor at Guru Nanak Khalsa Girls College in Punjab. She is not surprised that a relative newcomer in politics has ousted the ruling party. Amandeep says the Congress did not keep any of the promises or solve any problems faced by ordinary people. जब यहाँ पे कांग्रेस आई तब हमारे लिए वो था कि हाँ कुछ नया होगा 
कि वो इतने अच्छे अच्छे प्रॉमिस कर रही थी हमारे साथ लोगों के साथ आम जनता के साथ जो हमारी ज़रूरतें हैं जो बेसिक नीड्स हैं जैसे रोड्स का अच्छे होना हमारे जो यंगस्टर्स हैं उन्हें काम मिलना उनका जॉब करना क्योंकि तभी तो वो ड्रग्स में जाते हैं तो वो ड्रग्स का मतलब जो एक तरह से ख़त्म हो पाए तो वो चीज़ें ही नहीं हो पाई तो हम कैसे खुश हो सकते हैं Amandeep says people were frustrated with the incompetence of the Congress. She believes the people had no option but to vote for change since the ruling party could not deal with the state's crises. We want change. कि कोई और party आए जो main मुद्दे unemployment, drug addiction का पहले उसे handle करे, फिर उसके साथ साथ जो हम देखेंगे education and जो हमारी health issues जो cooperate करे, हमारी आवाज बने, हमारी आवाज सुने. In elections में खास मुद्दे क्या थे? तो सबसे पहला मुद्दा इस इन इलेक्शंस में लोगों ने अपनी आवाज़ उठाई सरकारों के खिलाफ उनकी गलत नीतियों के खिलाफ एंड इन द एंड इट्स आप दैट इज वन अ मैसिव मैंडेट फ्रॉम द वोटर्स इन पंजाब इट केप्ट इट्स कैंपेन फोकस्ड ऑन डेवलपमेंट इश्यूज प्रॉमिसिंग टू प्रोवाइड जॉब्स टू द यंग एंड स्टेबल इनकम टू फार्मर्स इट हैज मेड बोल्ड प्रॉमिसेस 300 units of free power to every household and 1000 rupees to each woman in the state it's unclear how arp can keep those promises in a debt ridden state but arp spokesman sanjeev jha maintains that people voted for change since people never had the chance to succeed under the previous regime log ye taiyar the is baat ko lekar ki badlav ke liye vote karna hai arvind kejriwal ji ko vote karna hai bhavant man ko vote karna hai ये कमोवेश लोगों ने लोग मन बना करके बैठे हुए थे तो मैं बहुत सरप्राइज नहीं हूँ मुझे लगता है कि अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने कहा भी था कि आ, एक मौका हमें दो तो मुझे लगता है कि लोग ये चाहते थे कि एक मौका केजरीवाल जी को देना है एक मौका भगवंत मान को देना है तो मुझे लगता है कि ये रिजल्ट वही आ, जो लोग मन बना के बैठे थे उसी को दर्शाता है बहुत बड़ा दुर्भाग्य है पंजाब देश का सबसे बड़ा इंडस्ट्रियल स्टेट है पंजाब देश का सबसे बड़ा एग्रीकल्चर स्टेट है पंजाब इस देश को हमेशा एक रास्ता दिखाता रहा है लेकिन जैसा सवाल कर उसके बावजूद अगर वहाँ की इंडस्ट्री ठप हो गई अगर वहाँ के किसान सुसाइड कर रहे हैं तो इसका मतलब है कि वहाँ इसके जिम्मेदार जो लोग गवर्नमेंट में थे जो गवर्नेंस में थे वो लोग हैं हर एक व्यक्ति हम ये चाहते हैं कि मेरा देश आगे बढ़े उसके लिए मैं कुछ भी कर जाऊँ लेकिन आपको अगर अपॉर्चुनिटी ना मिले आप में जज्बा है आपके पास आइडियाज है आपके पास क्षमता है उसके बावजूद आप इसलिए नहीं कर पाते कि सरकार ने आपको मौका नहीं दिया इट्स अ सैड डे फॉर द कांग्रेस पार्टी फेथ ट्रस्ट एंड कॉन्फिडेंस इन द वंस ग्रैंड ओल्ड पार्टी आर एट एन ओल्ड टाइम लो इट रूल्ड इंडिया फॉर मोर देन 6 डेकेड्स बट द वंस इनविंसिबल पॉलिटिकल बिहेमोथ इज इन अ टर्मिनल डिक्लाइन It's now facing a real prospect of extinction following a series of electoral defeats. We are seeing that the Congress is uh, election after election it is losing it's losing its connect with the masses it is not able to decide its own in-house leadership issue it is not able to uh, understand the importance or role of faith and religion in politics and it keeps you know kind of uh, trying to redefine it on the economic issues also the congress lacks that kind of uh, clarity or the kind of uh, courage of conviction so all these things are happening i think overall the congress is going through huge crisis of confidence so as we say that in politics there cannot be any void if congress is collapsing and tottering then aam aadmi party is coming Voters in five states haven't given the Congress Party a chance. The decline of the Congress Party started many years ago, but now it seems the party is on its last legs. Many Congress leaders admit that the party lost touch with reality and voters. The uh, Indian National Congress uh, failed to catch the pulse of the people, uh, failed to catch the imagination of the people who were craving for element of freshness. element of change who were uh, perturbed and disturbed by the baggage uh, of the ministers of the sitting mlas the anti incumbency factor uh, is uh, 
could not be overcome by changing the chief minister. I think that is what we failed to catch the imagination. And secondly, uh, International Congress failed to match up to a very uh, focused, uh, religion-free, caste-free, division-free campaign of the Aam Aadmi Party. Uh, the uh, voter uh, trusted with the Aam Aadmi Party across religion and caste lines. And um, they had a specific agenda, which the Indian National Congress failed to provide. Shergill minces no words in owning up to the Congress debacle. He believes if the party has to survive, it must take a hard look at its functioning. Congress party has to come out of this trap of uh, applying the same strategy and expecting a dis different result. We need to revamp, we need to rewire, we need to change the players, uh, we need to apply the principle, accountability, answerability, perform or perish. Performance is making Modi policies work among some sections of poor people. In the Varanasi constituency, Prime Minister Modi has adopted a village, transforming the lives of marginalized community known as Musahas. They are primarily landless, agricultural laborers, who sometimes go without work for eight months a year. After Modi adopted the village, the Musahas who lived in mud shacks on the roadside were given well-designed concrete homes they get 24-hour free electricity and can even access an ATM machine in their bank branch set up in the village. The government has also opened bank accounts for the villagers where it transfers money, largely eliminating corruption in the delivery of schemes. 47-year-old Mania survives on 50 to 100 rupees a day if she has work. She now has a house to call her own where her children can sleep peacefully at night. जबले पैसा नहीं लगा था तीन महीना से फिर ही मिल रहा है राशन सिलेंडर मिला है गैस मिला है सब चीज मिला है हम लोग को तो जबले पैसा रहता है पास में तबले सिलेंडर भराता हूँ ना ही पैसा रहता है तो लकड़ी पर खाना बनाता हूँ मनिया एंड हर विलेज हैव वोटेड फॉर द बीजेपी एंड हैव बिकम मोदी फॉलोअर्स ऑब्जर्वर्स बिलीव वन रीजन is the government's welfare schemes and the efficient delivery of benefits to the poor. The government welfare schemes delivery has been reduced in two ways. One is that the corruption is less and less, or not. Because it's a free ration machine, 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 it's a free ration machine. So there is a corruption of corruption, or the housing allotment, दूसरा उनके डिलीवरी जो रिक्वायर्ड लोग हैं उन तक हुई है और ये अक्रॉस द कास्ट हुई है और अक्रॉस द रिलीजन हुई है तो उसने भी ये बीजेपी के बोट बेस का फैलाव किया है प्रसार किया है दूसरा उसने लोगों को महंगाई अनइंप्लॉयमेंट जैसे मार की जो जो कंडीशन है यहाँ जिसका लगातार दबाव है उसमें एक तरह की राहत की सांस लेने की कंडीशन बनाई है दिस नो डाउट अबाउट दैट there have been various schemes uh, aimed at helping the poor people, especially after the COVID. Uh, all these schemes have benefited the people. They have reached to the people who needed to be helped. And the verdict of these elections in five states indicate that a lot of people benefited from these welfare schemes. And if we look at their voting patterns, how they voted, a lot of people who benefited from these welfare schemes voted in favor of BJP. So there is BJP has gained from the welfare schemes, uh, especially after the COVID. In the last one year, the government spent a lot of money on providing uh, free ration, wheat, uh, paddy, uh, salt, uh, free energy. So a lot of social welfare measures were taken to compensate for the initial uh, incompetence in the handling of the pandemic. Well, you know, the real story, not just in UP, but in large parts of the country, is the incompetence of the opposition. I think in any normal kind of situation, 
if you had a very active uh, opposition political parties, if you had an imaginative opposition political leadership, if they had understood the kind of situation the country has been in, they would have been far more aggressive in campaigning. <laughs> Despite the BJP's resounding victory, social and political divisions have sharpened in recent years. Communal polarization has also reared its ugly head, threatening peace and order. Can Modi bridge the divisions and avoid the gathering storm? Or will the Punjab poll results bring the opposition parties together, posing a serious challenge to Modi's reign two years down the road? मतदाताओं को बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं ये चुनाव नतीजे भाजपा की प्रो पुअर प्रो एक्टिव गवर्नेंस पर एक प्रकार से बड़ी मजबूत मोहर लगाते हैं The Modi wave has swept away all opposition, except in the border state of Punjab. The resounding victory of the BJP and the meteoric rise of AAP have decimated the 137-year-old Congress party. In 2017, the Congress party was reduced to a single digit in Uttar Pradesh. This time, it has managed just two seats in the 404-member assembly. The rout of the country's oldest political party now seems complete. Congress is vacating the space state after state. This is not only a defeat for Congress, if you look at the magnitude of defeat. UP completely wiped out, not even 3% vote. Punjab, they once a ruling party in Punjab, almost wiped out 23-24% votes just 18, 19 seats. And look at the competitor, Aam Admi Party winning 92 seats. So the problem with the Congress is not losing election. The problem with the Congress is getting completely marginalized in the state where they are losing elections. The point is the loss is a loss. There is no justification to the loss. Anybody in the Indian National Congress trying to sugarcoat any supporter trying to sugarcoat this loss with standard excuses, stale excuses, like we increase the voter share, EVM, vote margin has increased, is doing a disservice and is a traitor to the Indian National Congress. We need to accept the defeat with the utmost humility. We need to accept the failure without any ifs and buts to bounce back with the Big Bang. The phenomenal rise of the BJP as the only national party comes against the backdrop of deep divisions in the country. The opposition and critics have accused Modi and the BJP of polarizing and dividing the country on communal lines. Critics say the polarization helps the BJP since India is a Hindu majority country. In the run-up to the state elections, a controversy over schoolgirls wearing hijab led to tension in the state of Karnataka. Many girls insisted on wearing hijab, leading to confrontations with hardline Hindu students. Now the state high court has banned the hijab in schools. But 24-year-old Bushra Fatima, studying education and psychology, believes it's her fundamental right to wear a hijab. It's totally nonsensical. It's a measure to stop girls from getting an access to the education. According to them, if we remove our hijab, then only we can get a ticket to the school. 
Well, in the community, there is a bit of tension. They're worried about the girls and their education. The BJP rejects the charges of polarization, claiming it's fighting for the same rights for all citizens. It's a bizarre accusation that the parties which want certain communal laws, they want different laws for different religions, they want different group rights. That is communalism. And yet they are accusing the BJP of communalism, which wants a uniform civil code, which is in our directive principles in the Constitution, that every Indian citizen is equal, irrespective of religion, caste, creed, and every Indian citizen should have the same rights. That's what BJP stands for. And they have the gall to call this communal. There are different ways of looking at the BJP's politics. The opposition says BJP has polarized the country and BJP is gaining because it, BJP has been able to polarize the country on religious lines. But if you talk to the people on the ground, you would come across a large number of people who would say BJP has been able to consolidate the Hindus. The country was divided earlier, not now. So BJP is the party which has helped in consolidating the Hindus. Earlier Hindus were divided and Muslims were consolidated. So this is the another narrative. The driving force behind Hindu consolidation has been the RSS, or the National Volunteers Association. It leads a large group of allied organizations with a presence all over the country. Many of the BJP's top leaders, including Prime Minister Modi, were RSS members earlier. 31-year-old Gaurav Mishra takes part regularly in RSS training sessions beside the Ganga in Varanasi. Gaurav, a PhD student in political science, is an RSS volunteer dedicated to the nation's welfare. He believes there's an awakening of India's ideals and culture in Hindu society. भारत के अंदर भारतीय मूल्यों भारतीय आदर्शों को लेकर के हिंदू समाज में एक जागरण की भावना आई है और वो जागरण निश्चित तौर पर प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जो भारत की इस महान संस्कृति को लेकर इस महान मूल्य और आदर्शों के साथ आगे बढ़ रहे हैं इससे हम सब एक हैं उन्होंने कभी भी किसी अलग धर्म के लोग या किसी अन्य के ऊपर कोई बड़ी टिप्पणी नहीं की वो सबको लेकर के चलते हैं उनका इनफैक्ट एक नारा भी है सबका साथ सबका विकास और सबका विश्वास तो मुझे लगता है कि नरेंद्र मोदी जी या और कोई भी भारत का जो नेता है जो हिंदुत्व की बात करता है तो वो एक साझे संस्कृति की बात करता है हम सबको लेकर के आगे चल रहे हैं इससे सबका भला होगा देर इज नथिंग रॉन्ग विथ हैविंग ए रिलीजियस कॉन्शियसनेस इंडिया हैज पारसीज एंड क्रिश्चियंस एंड हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम्स एंड सिख्स वर ऑल वैल्यूड मेम्बर्स ऑफ आवर कम्युनिटी बट what is needed is that there must be a commitment to our constitution. The rise in religious consciousness has become a major controversy since Modi came to power in 2014. But in 1991, the BJP promised to build a Ram temple at the site of a 16th century mosque in Ayodhya. It has now fulfilled its promise following a Supreme Court ruling. There are also fresh rumblings by hardline Hindu groups about building more temples in Varanasi and Mathura, where mosques stand today. Some incidents of lynching people on the suspicion of cow smuggling and consumption of beef also took place in Uttar Pradesh. Cows are considered sacred by the Hindu community, and beef is therefore deemed non-edible. Though there are no reports of such cases now, there's an undercurrent of tension between some sections of the majority Hindu community and the minority Muslim community. The BJP has not highlighted the issue of building a temple in Ayodhya in the recent elections. But some observers are wary that the BJP can still play the Hindu card when needed. If that happens, communal tensions will intensify and Modi will find it hard to take the nation forward on a path of inclusive growth and progress for all. State-sponsored polarization 
has has worked it has worked in several societies and several countries there is a design but the beauty of it is that the bjp is not sticking to a single agenda they have a package a assortment now that for the voter maybe one could argue that there is a, a kind of polarization is there or attempt is there but it also has lot of what we call it as developmental plank like welfare is a you know the roads being constructed and uh, uh, technological growth uh, india playing a pivotal role in the global theater in foreign policy the voter or the masses are quite sure that bjp under narendra modi leadership has this kind of muscular nationalism so the bjp is trying to from a composite culture they are giving primacy to uh so to say the hindu centric cultural icons or symbols and they're doing it in very uh, successfully the state elections have again shown modi is an unchallenged national leader even though the bjp faces opposition in some states there's still no challenger to take on modi in the general elections in 2024 will modi prove his critics wrong again by putting the economy back on track and lead in the bjp to another massive win in the general elections it is going to be a very easy ride for narendra modi and uh, the bjp in 2024 simply because the opposition is very much fragmented i don't think there is much doubt in anybody's mind that the bjp is extremely well placed to come back to office in 2024 i've already mentioned that you know you ask indians in general whether there's an alternative to prime minister modi there's no one that compares even close